friends and welcome to this ASMR video. Today I'm going to be having a quick look through um, a For Real Ghostbusters comic which I've purchased recently. This one cost me £3 from a local shop which sells all memorabilia and random items and um, when I saw these comics I was very excited because as a kid I never actually had the Real Ghostbusters comic. I did have the figures, um, as you can see Egon is uh, helping me with uh, with this video, um, lots of other memorabilia, but never actually um, a comic. So I'm excited to see what's on here. Um, hopefully, it uh, brings back some memories for some people. Um, if you've had perhaps this issue or, or maybe a, a similar one, or can remember uh, this comic coming out, if you're a similar age to me, um, I was I was too young for comics at five years old. I think or certainly not this one anyway. Or maybe I wasn't, I don't really know, to be honest, but I didn't have this one anyway. So, without further ado, let's actually take a look at it, shall we? so scenes in it but for a kid this is what you need really I quite like it I'm not going to read it out to you I don't think that would be very interesting for you we then have a Spengler's spirit guide so this is um, looks like him talking about um, certain uh, ghosts and spirits a little bit of uh, information there we have another comic, The Real Ghostbusters of Fun Scare. And I guess that's a pun on fun fair. Yeah, it is, because of the Dodgems there. I like the idea of uh, Slimer and the Dodgem especially being bored there. So again, two or three pages. Not very, not very big. We have an advert for the local, the current film of the time. All Dogs Go to Heaven. And I've not seen that myself. So that's obviously just coming out um, in 1990. I think the most interesting part 
for me. You know, this is the adverts we get. Um, they're a time capsule. We have uh, another comic. This is not really a comic strip, though. This is a, a picture and then an actual story, the sort of story, I guess, a parent would read to their child at bedtime. I certainly would love to be read something like this as, as a kid. So yeah, a few pages, that's, that's a good probably five, ten minute story for someone just going to bed. So we're halfway through the, uh, the magazine now and we've got uh, a competition. What's quite impressive about this is it's 34 years old and it's completely intact. It's not been, uh, it's not been coloured in, it's not been messed with. Uh, there's the, um, Puzzle's not been done. Um, entries that arrived no later than Friday the 30th of March 1990. So we have missed the date for the competition, unfortunately. Not that I probably know the answers anyway. Um, yeah, first 60. So with this one, you would win a, a real Ghostbusters bin seat. You might be wondering what a bin seat is. I certainly am. Um, it looks like it is a cunningly disguised a storage bin hiding away all of your toys, books and comics, but the extra special part about them is that they are made with a sturdy base and lid and added onto this is a cushion so that once you have tied it up you can sit on the bin and enjoy the latest issue of the Real Ghostbusters comic. So that's quite nice, it helps the parents out that you can uh, store stuff and you've got your Real Ghostbusters item in, in the bedroom or wherever. Quite like that actually. As a kid, I was always such a tidy boy anyway, so really boring. So I probably wouldn't have needed something like this. Right. Moving on, we have um, Dead True. It's horrific and ghastly, and what's more, it's a true tale of terror. Day, read on. So this is not something that they've made up for the magazine. This is actually a, um, a true ghost story. I, I say the word true um, loosely. Um, it's argued quite... Um, quite something to say it's actually true but you know some people believe where I work actually there's uh, rumours of a ghost and I'm desperate to see it desperate to but um, I've not uh, not been able to yet so yeah a little story there not sure how appropriate it is for young kids but I suppose it depends I don't really know well, what age you would read comics like this maybe I'm thinking sort of six seven eight maybe maybe older i don't know um, then we have another story the real ghostbusters in ghostbusters 2 so this uh, came out about a year or so after the uh, second film i think that was 1989 i think um, it's it looks a bit more grown up if you compare those that text to the earlier stories where we've got quite big text, quite um, colourful, sort of uh, very caricature type. And this looks a bit more for older kids, I would say, potentially. A bit more like a Batman type comic. Um, smaller text. So that's quite nice. So maybe I'll have to reevaluate my um, suggestion of the ages of people reading this. I imagine this would go up to probably. 9, 10, maybe even 11 years old, I was, maybe. Um, so we have, uh, I think that's a scene from the film. Maybe all of it is, I certainly remember that bit. I've not seen Ghostbusters 2 for a while, actually. I watched Ghostbusters, uh, the original, uh, again recently. I absolutely love it. Every time I see it, I, I see something new that I laugh at. But I've not seen Ghostbusters 2 for a while. So that's a four-page comic. a letters page uh, ghost writing so this is to uh, Peter again looks so different from Bill Murray um, so someone has written in with some questions in fact they're all questions and uh, Peter answers them which is nice I never did get my letters when I've been published in a comic when I was younger, but then that might be something to do with the fact I never actually wrote one, but my brother did. He was very happy about that. Now we're on to um, an advert 
from a different magazine, Slimer. So if you can't get enough Ghostbusters and you love Slimer, then that's an offshoot magazine. Um, I never got that one. I, def I definitely didn't. And that's a monthly one. I, s I don't know for sure, but I imagine this is a weekly one. The fact that the date on it is the 17th of March tells me that it's it's a weekly. Potentially it could be fortnightly. We have slime time here with some jokes. Again, you've got to send them in. Um, give you an example. What do ghosts wear on their feet? Boots. What goes up and what rolls a jellycopter? Yeah. They're quite good jokes, actually. Yeah, they're quite good. Um, then we have, um, again, this is a real throwback for me. I remember when getting out of comics when I was a kid, the one I had loads of was Thunderbirds. And uh, you cut out this bit and then you have to take it to a news agent and they were then ordering Comic View every week so that you could always get it every every single time. I always had a problem with these because being such an OCD type uh, clean and tidy um, kid, I would there's not a chance in hell I would cut up a magazine because I'd always be worried about what I'd miss on the next on the next page and look if you did that you'd end up missing some of your story there on the back and I, I would that would just not sit well with me at all so um, it'd be the photocopier if one of them was around back in the 19 early 90s I don't know so anyway that's um, Ray and uh, Peter not looking very happy they can't get in the magazine and then we have a advert for looks like the next issue which again confirms it is a weekly magazine and then a, a Slimer comic at the end which looks very much like Beano Dandy style with the, uh, the exaggerated uh, facial expressions so yeah I've enjoyed looking through this I hope you have too I hope it's brought back some memories for you and um, yeah I really hope you've enjoyed it um, stay tuned there'll be more uh, videos um, on other nostalgic items magazines, toys, uh, games. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.